Hello, our dear friends. Hello, welcome back there. Yes, welcome back. So we've been talking about all the volcanic activity going on, and Etna has been super busy, and Etna is Europe's busiest volcano for sure. But this last eruption covered the streets of Catania, Italy with ash. Yeah, I know if I had to look out my window and see what they're seeing, I, I honestly don't know how I would feel pretty scared. Yeah, and when we meditate, uh, I'll open up my eyes and I do see a dormant volcano in the distance, by the way. That's kind of creepy. Yeah, Yeah, and I was kind of getting the feeling like, I wonder how dormant it really is. I know, all of them, right? Yeah, so Fuego has been going and Sacagawea as well. So we have here Italy and we have Japan and we have Guatemala with huge eruptions. There's video here uh, for you to see. And, you know, people are calmly filming this like from their kitchen windows i wouldn't be calm you know maybe they do have to be kind of in a state of disconnect though yeah you know it's incredible what we're seeing look at this i know that's huge there's no doubt the volcanic activity in this world is going up up yeah. up it is so that one that we see when we're doing our meditations outside you know it does make you wonder i wonder if that one's thinking about waking up Yes, and ashfall that we see over here. And cars covered in ash as well. And here we have Sakurajima in Japan. Mother Earth is waking up. She really is. Yes, and we had a, a great meditation session today and we contacted uh, Isis once again and, and we're going to be doing that on a regular basis and we're going to be sharing with you guys some information that we're getting and uh, Fuego down in Guatemala uh, as well. Yeah, look at that. I mean, it's just overall everywhere. The extremes of the world are getting more extreme. That's the bottom line. And here in Venice, we, we saw massive, massive, massive flooding, right? And then we get this. And, and this is not the first time that I've seen this. You know, the canals dry up totally almost. There's just a little puddle now. I mean, it, it's it's one or the other. Wow, it's almost like just somebody kind of took the drain plug out. Yeah, maybe a big giant did that. <laughs> it could have been. <laughs> An exceptional low tide left Venice's famous canals just about dry yesterday. All the traditional gondolas and boats, and they're beached. You know, no, no little cruising through and enjoying somebody serenading you in Italian. Yeah. I would be calling on some water elementals. Right? Isn't this crazy? Look at this. Wow. An even worse drought event occurred in 2018 when water levels reached uh, negative 83 centimeters below the threshold. It's weird what we got going on here. Again, it's extremes to both ways as, you know, what we're looking at for March in general, almost the entire country is going to be above normal temps. The only place that's going to be below normal temps is really going to be Washington and, and Oregon. It's going to be the Pacific Northwest. The rest of the country is going to be pretty toasty, pretty quick. And uh, the central part, especially uh, like in Arkansas and Missouri and, and so on, is going to be really toasty. So starts the pendulum the other way. Exactly. Oh, my God, a tornado. Well... This is actually a tornado of mosquitoes. <laughs> now I was talking about elementals. I'm thinking, what kind of elemental put this together? I don't know. We'll get some air <laughs> elementals to go blow it away somewhere. Blow it yes. up to the moon. Yes, yes. So, yeah, there's there's several videos, and it's not just one. There's There's multiples of these. People were filming them, and you could tell they were apprehensive. Like, they think, wow, that's got to be a tornado. But then when they get close, everything is, it's just millions and millions of mosquitoes. That's just so gross. And it's because of the heavy rainfalls. Mm, yeah, it heavy rain. And by the way, this is down in Argentina. Uh, so, you know, the heavy rainfall is everywhere. And then, of course, we have some drought. We have drought in the west, and that will lead to the wildfires, lead to other things, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sure will. But when you have all that sitting water, it's perfect ground for mosquitoes to breed, you know. So we get the floods, then, which also cause the famine, and they also cause the pestilence. It's, you know, it's like each of the horse riders <laughs> are 
are intertwined with each other. And here we have extreme hailstorm hitting South Africa, turning streets into icy rivers. It's every every part of the globe, guys, everywhere. Yeah, look at that. That's going to be super slick when they go out. Yeah, it's just brutal. And again, you got to have backup to your backup. You know, don't count on the grid. Uh, most definitely don't count on the grid. And I know there's a bunch of Texans that are saying amen to that. Yeah, they sure are. Yep. As you see all this, it's just incredible all over the globe that we're seeing. Massive, massive change. Scientists have discovered a new active fault capable of a 6.9 quake, and it runs underneath San Diego, as you see here. So, yeah, California's got a lot to deal with when it comes to the natural disasters, you know, and, you know, they've been blessed uh, in, like, the last couple of months compared to some areas, like, say, Texas, you know, that's gotten hit so hard because they still have the beautiful weather from the, uh, you know, Pacific Ocean mitigating the temperatures and keeping things kind of nice. But there again, you got the quakes and you have the wildfires and, you know, who knows what else is, is going to be happening as you, as you see uh, the fault lines going through San Diego. And, you know, we, they got a lot going on there. And we have all all these new things, which... You know, again, they they it, they say the terms as if they were always there, and you know we did get from a friend who works for uh, you know Big Brother, so to speak. Uh, you know, did you ever notice that they're saying these terms as if they were always there? I'll let you in on a secret. They weren't. I know, right? <laughs> it's true though. And so, you know, look at this. This is from uh, Mauna Kea, uh, which is in Hawaii. And, you know, massive volcano. And you see this column of blue and red lights surrounded by a bright blaze of white light. Definitely does look otherworldly. However, it's entirely real and features two lightning phenomena, a red sprite and a blue jet. Right. And I don't know, when I was looking at this, what I saw is a, a being actually that's coming out of his hands. I, I see a bigger being in the sky there. And as he puts his hand down, this like comes from his hand. Interesting. Does it feel like an elemental type of being or does it feel more like, I don't know, what we categorize the interdimensional, extraterrestrial? Elemental. Elemental. Mm, very interesting. Interesting. And so... It is the U.S.'s deadliest avalanche season in years. And experts say the pandemic is partly to blame. What? How do you say that? Well, simply because more and more people are going stir crazy and they're heading to the hills. So we do have unusual snowpack, you know, in, in many areas, more than we've had in decades. And then when you have more people that are just like, you got to get the hell out of Dodge, and so, you know, spend some time out there with Mother Nature, which is amazing, you know. And so it can bring so much sanity to you. But they say that so many extra people than normal out there could trigger more avalanches yeah. as well. Yeah, there's it's kind of like an immature day out, I guess. Amateur. Yes. It, yes. So to speak. And this road is just basically um, collapsing. And it's part of, again, what happens when we have... You know, uh, well, you'll know, have drought, then we'll have the wildfires, then you'll get the floods. As you see here, this is the 100-mile stretch from William Randolph's Hearst Hilltop Castle at San Simeon to Carmel, which is, uh, you know, again, beautiful area, gorgeous area, amazing views. But just, you know, keep your eyes on the road ahead because it might not be there. I know, you guys. Keep a good 100, 200 feet ahead of yourself if you can. Microwave power beaming. U.S. Navy successfully tests an orbiting solar panel that could one day be power from space to anywhere on Earth and also shift it. So, yeah, you could see a little artist's conception of it sending the solar power down to the Earth. Hmm, right to the surface. Well, they say that they would be able to reroute in a matter of minutes, energy, say, coming into uh, Chicago. And if it was needed, they could just shift it and 
just in minutes it'd be in texas just like that yeah i mean i don't think this is super new i i do believe that tesla had something like this going on yeah these are just basically solar panels you know and so yeah it's it's something that they're planning it's interesting too because you know at the end of this article it talks about you know don't worry though if there was say a dr evil you know or some sort of mad scientist or some sort of crazy plotting group with bad intentions we would know about it yeah. because you know you can't militarize space without everybody knowing about it right yeah yeah oh there's a bridge for sale in brooklyn you know that two two for sale two first yes. wow no, only a dollar right buy, buy one get one there you go there you go and so you know i look at this headline global defense spending led by u.s and china hits new high right new high 1.83 trillion dollars spent on defense right priorities 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 and and there again we we spend so much more money potentially trying to destroy each other instead of trying to mitigate issues real real issues that the world is facing obviously with everything that we've seen impacting the food situation it's heading towards famine it's heading towards famine there already are many spots in the world that are experiencing famines yeah we need to be getting prepared to you know gather with our neighbors help take care of ourselves you know because there's not going to be a galloping somebody to the rescue or at least we shouldn't we shouldn't depend on anybody i don't think we can depend on the governments any of them really when you get down to it you know even even little costa rica is under pressure yeah. you know f from higher powers you know, we have a family member, um, you know, who one of these days, and I will keep him quiet, I really got a feeling like he might be a very, very high, powerful political person. Mm -hmm. um, and he understands what's going on and, and sees the need for change. And it's going to take leadership, true leadership with people that are, you know, ballsy enough to come out and speak it honestly and stand up you know against the system it's going to take a lot for us to turn this tide and you know he's in a, sm a very small country um, but a beautiful country you know and, and not really an impoverished country you know compared to so many of them out there but you know they can't make their own decisions you know it's these other countries that make the decisions for them they don't have free will you know even the leadership of you know these smaller countries around the globe don't have free will yeah he, he has the courage enough to um ask for these underlying truths that you know as we awaken we become privy to and it, it takes quite a person to even ask and be open yes and if if what we're seeing around the globe is truly just simply the results of a completely natural cycle you know i'm not saying that that's what i think i'm just saying that right if we had the will, we could definitely do it as far as avert um, the famine that's coming. It, it wouldn't be hard, honestly. It really wouldn't be hard. Think about this, 1.83 trillion. So it, it makes me think of this young gentleman over here. And I've talked about him about four times in uh, 3,000 videos. And he grows citrus even in the snow in his geothermal greenhouse in Nebraska. Yes, and he's been doing it for quite some time. And if we were to put some effort toward this, there would be no such thing as hunger. Yeah, you know, he gets better citrus than you get in Florida. Mm -hmm. it, and this is in Nebraska's high plains. In the middle of a bitter Midwestern winter, you could still pick oranges, lemons, and grapefruit because the citrus grows in a geothermal greenhouse. And the remarkable fact is, you know how much he needed? $22,000 to do this. $22,000 to set it up. And now it costs virtually nothing to keep it heated throughout the entire winter because the warmth comes from underground. So he, he has piping that comes from underground uh, that will cool it off in the summer and that will keep it warm in the winter. And so he could grow tropical fruit here. And this is um, Russ Finch. 
and what an inspiration he is. He's about 90 now. He can even grow bananas, any tropical plant, citrus, figs, you name it. $22,000. So we need to talk to the idiots that are running the globe because $1.83 trillion, right? If, if instead of spending it on potentially just trying to kill each other, we built these, and I'm sure you could do better in bulk pricing, you know, unless we're going to be doing things the government way, you know, of $100 nails and $1,000 hammers. You, we could build 83 million of these greenhouses for, for the same cost that, you know, he did here with our one year you know, global defense spending. 83 million greenhouses. How much food do you think we could get out of that? Mm -hmm. I know. And, you know, then we could go after creating housing for people who don't have it. Yeah. You know, there's no reason for this world to be in the shape it is, except for an absolute, you're either going to say, if you want to be gentle, okay, it's complete incompetence by the leadership that we have which really they should all be fired when you get down to it and, and replaced. Or it's it's even worse than complete incompetence. It is. It's really sad. It's sad because there's a certain agenda here at play and it doesn't it doesn't um, take into account healthy human beings. Yeah. So we have to, you know, spread this far and wide and we have to speak up as as we are doing at this moment. And there's video there so you can watch it. Um I think it's Kirkson Dirk said that did the uh, interview with him. She's got a wonderful channel of, on all sorts of alternative uh, lifestyles and, you know, getting yourself situated so you're not depending on anybody. Yes, that's what we need to do. Except for each other, you know, our families and loved ones. Families and loved ones. So, guys, thanks for being part of this family. Make sure you are subscribed and have the bell clicked for all notifications. Thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Anybody needs to reach us, it's E-E-A-R-T-S at ProtonMail or EvolutionaryEnergyArts at gmail.com. And as far as the Vedic charts and all, we, we still do have about a, about a two to three week um, backup. But we do appreciate your patience as well. And Cindy's going to give us a tune. God bless and namaste. God bless and namaste, guys.